go to science. Go to science. What's that? What's what? That there? Who knows? You wish someone would help you figure it out. Research, observe, deduce, and share the scientific process. It will help you, no doubt. So what do you do if you want to know more? You should join our crew and we'll go and explore. Go to science. Vote on adventures while you may. Welcome to Go To Science. I'm Curtis. I'm a scientist. I'm Beth, and I'm a teacher. And we are thrilled that you're joining us here in Mobile Headquarters. It goes wherever we needed to go, and right now, that's Australia. Yeah, yeah, we're here testing our hypothesis that for every five adult gray kangaroos we see, we should see one visible joey. Yay! You know, if the hypothesis is true, that means that there should be gray kangaroos well into the future and that there will be enough food and places to live so they can be healthy. Yeah, but if our hypothesis is false, then Dr. Herbert and others will have to work together to figure out a way to bring the kangaroo population back into balance with their environment. Well, that's why this hypothesis is so important. Oh, absolutely, yeah, yeah, that's exactly why. Well, last time we visited a really cool school and we found a couple of different kinds of marsupials pouched mammals. Yeah, yeah, well let's get to the field video, but first let's do a motion break so I can get some of my wiggles out. Sounds good. Yeah. Well, let your wiggles start to waggle out. I think I'm gonna start with my shoulders this time. Wiggle, 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 crazy wiggles. Wiggle, 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 and then freeze. Nice. Now, zip your mouths and open your ears so you can be an extra good listener. Turn your brains on to high power for your best thinking ever, and Watch carefully. When we come back, we'll answer some of your questions. Go to science and we'll bring the data to you. And we'll do the science with you. We continued on the same route. We went from Yamba to Townsville. We came across a cool road sign. A koala crossing? We looked for koalas and kangaroos. Soon, we saw a male gray kangaroo standing under the trees. And now... It's time to play... Mystery, Mystery Marks. Marks! Hint, it is a marsupial. Hi. Well, we've come to visit a school here in Australia. I hear it's amazing. Come on, let's go check it out. It's a beautiful school and they do lots of outdoor learning. They even have koalas in their trees. Like most kids in Australia, they have to wear sun hats whenever they're outside. We toured the school and joined their weekly assembly where they sang the national anthem. <laughs> Oh, 
They even have a swimming pool. Awesome. We said goodbye to our new friends. Then we drove to the coast. Like the kids at school, these construction workers wore sun hats, but theirs were a different design. I wonder which kind works better. On the coast, we saw rock wallabies. Rock wallabies are basically small kangaroos. They are often found in rock piles like these. They can move across the rocks really quickly. During the day, they often go into crevices between rocks to stay out of the hot sun. But this one seems very curious about us. We had more exploring to do, and I think that Joey looked a bit sleepy. Bye, bye, Joey. We went for a hike up in the hills. As we hiked up in the hills, we kept our eyes open for kangaroos and koalas. Hey everybody, well, we made it to the top of this big hill. While we haven't seen any koalas yet, we did find this awe-inspiring view behind us. Oh, it is gorgeous. Check it out. I'm standing under this eucalyptus tree because the leaves of this tree are some of the favorite food of koalas. And so when we're out looking for koalas, we need to be looking at the kind of trees or look for the trees, the leaves they like to eat, like this one. You mean like that koala right above you? Oh yeah, great spotting, Beth. They're marsupials. Just like kangaroos, their joeys ride in a pouch. They spend most of their time in the trees, so as the joeys grow larger, they crawl out of the pouch and ride on their mother's back. I didn't see a joey with this one. Did you? We left this koala to its scratching. It was time for us to head back to the camper van. How many gray kangaroos did you see today? everybody welcome back yay I was so surprised to see a koala in the tree right above Curtis's head <laughs> they can be so quiet they can I, I, I did not hear it not hear it at all until you pointed it out and did you know that some people actually call them koala bears I have but heard that that's not correct because they are not bears at all no they are marsupials. They have pouches. Koalas yeah. have pouches. Yeah, and bears do not have pouches. And we don't have pouches because we are not marsupials. No, we're not marsupials <laughs> and we don't have pouches. But we do have excellent friends out we there. Do. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited that so many of you are joining us today. And you know what to do. If you've got questions, put them right over here so yeah. we can see and answer some. And if you don't have questions, you also know what to do, which is say hi. Yes. So oh. we know who's out there. We love that. Well, before we hop into those questions, uh -huh. let's take a little motion break. There's a different activity on the back of each card. I wonder which card Curtis is likely to pick today. Hmm. Well, I see. I picked the first one on the first day, and the second card on the second day, and the third card on the third day. But today, I'm doing something crazy and wild. I'm going to go with the fourth card. I yeah. So. We haven't done this one yet. <laughs> oh, koala climb. Oh. Let's pretend that we are sleepy koalas and hang it out in a tree, and then we'll climb up to eat some eucalyptus. Ah, okay. Well, you know, something, another thing that keeps popping in my head, all these cool things about koalas. Yes. Is koalas like us have five fingers on each of their hands. Oh, yeah. Yeah, cool. and koalas have something else in common. They have opposable fingers, like we have opposable thumb. Yes. Is, and that means you can touch the tips of your fingers to your thumb. Mm -hmm. You couldn't do that if it wasn't opposable. But koalas have opposable fingers, 
And I notice I say fingers because they have two, not just one. On each hand. On each wow. hand. So that's an illustration of a koala hand or paw, the bottom side. And you can see they have those two opposable fingers. Well, I can't really <laughs> make my second finger opposable, but let's imagine we have koala hands. Can you make your hands like this? Yeah. Koala yeah. hands? And this excellent. is excellent, excellent adaptation for gripping branches and tree limbs for climbing. All right, so imagine you've got those koala hands okay, and you're holding kinda, on. Yeah, kind of sleepy on the tree. Mm. It's time to eat. Okay. So let's climb up the tree. Use your koala hands yeah. to climb up your fingers and up like this. and up. Oh, I think I can reach them. You can look oh, Me too. Things. I want some of those. Mm. 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 Oh, oh, there's some. Yeah. Oh, reach over there. Mm. 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 I'm going to try my other hand. Okay. Mm. 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 Oh, there's some. Mm, it's hard to do my fingers like that. Yeah, it is. But I'm getting really sleepy. Let's go back down and sleep where we were sleeping before. Wake up! What? It's what? time for questions. Well, that was an abrupt wake up. I mean, I mean, play music or something. No, no, it's just time to go. Well, I am awake now. Well, Curtis, me <laughs> too. And we've got questions? some great friends joining. Oh, we Ms. Tedesco, scientists are here. Hey, welcome, oh, welcome. Th thanks for your publication. We loved answering your question. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm glad it was helpful. And Mrs. Crocker, second grade, is here. Hey, welcome, welcome. Mohammed is here. Hey, Hello. welcome, Mohammed. And Mrs. Coates' class is here. Great. Wow, Excellent. and Mrs. Davis's data diggers are here as well. Wow. And Mrs. Mountford's class is also here. Wow, what a great group. Yeah. Excellent. Well, we've got some koala questions, mm. I see. So let's I'm start with those. Yeah. Koala questions coming right up. What do baby koalas eat? They nurse from their mothers. They, their mothers produce milk, and because they're mammals, they produce milk, and that's what the, the babies feed on for, a, for quite some time, for wow. months, months at a time. Wow. And koalas can be, can they be brown or just gray? They can be both. They're different. It's... There's one species of koala in Australia, but there's three or four recognized subspecies, which means they're the same species, but they have a little bit of different appearance. And some of those are a little more brownish red color. Some of them are grayish white color, like the one behind us. But they're all the same species, just live in different parts of Australia. And what kind of a koala did we see? A koala. Just a koala. <laughs> yeah. Just a koala. Yeah, the koala yeah. yeah. Um, and so why do koalas climb trees? Uh, well, that's couple reasons to get away from predators but also that's their food source they eat almost exclusively leaves and one of their f ones they tend to feed on most is the eucalyptus tree and their leaves but they don't have to they can eat other lead tree leaves as well well Evie wonders how big can koalas get mm, a really big one would be 25 pounds somewhere in that range so the size of a mid-sized dog a big dog maybe a, a lab maybe I think yeah and grace wonders how long they live uh, koalas in the wild can live upwards around 10 years, but it, it varies, but 10 years. And so, uh, how many koalas did we see? We saw the one. Yeah. The one. The other picture we had was the school had provided us because they had had koalas in the trees at their school. Yeah, and baby koalas are called joeys. joeys just well, like our, all marsupial babies. We've got, oh, we've got a couple of other koala questions, mm -hmm. but let's get to another topic so all of our friends have a moment here. Okay. Mohammed is wondering about the rock wallabies. How did they stay away from predators? Um, well, one, they can hop really quickly, um, like, like all these kangaroos can. And the rocks, they will hide in around those rocks. They will get up into crevices. But, yeah, but the ability to be able to hop around on rocks like that, other predators can't get by, or can't move that quickly on those rocks. Are the rock wallabies part of the kangaroo family? They're macropodidae, that part of the family. Yes, they are a kangaroo. Really, the only difference between a wallaroo, a wallaby, and a kangaroo is their size. And so we tend to think of kangaroos and call things kangaroos that are the bigger macropods. Um, so, yeah, they're all related. Wow, excellent. Well, let's talk about the school for a minute. Oh, good. Mrs. Davis's data diggers wonder what grades were at the school we visited. Oh, well, they had, they don't call it grade, they call it year. So year one is the same as our grade one. So they had year one through six, plus what they, they don't call it kindergarten, they call it pre-primer. So they had six, seven, seven grades. Seven grades. And, oh, there's a question coming in from the RAD researchers. They hey, want to know about the song that they were singing at the school. Oh, Hi, RAD researchers. Oh, yeah, that was the national anthem. That's right. And I love the beginning sound oh, yeah. of that song. <laughs> yeah, that sound was made by an instrument called a didgeridoo. And a didgeridoo <laughs> is an instrument invented by the first people that lived 
in Australia, the indigenous people of Australia, yeah. the Aborigines. Yeah, they arrived in Australia roughly 60, 65,000 years ago. So they've been here wow. a long time. And, and well, you know, I happen to have a didgeridoo. Excellent. Maybe we should show it to them. Yes, yes, right. yes. I'm really excited. <laughs> All right, so this is a didgeridoo. What? And the first thing you might notice about it is the beautiful colors and I patterns love the on it. paintings. Yeah, and this, this is inspired by Aboriginal art mm -hmm. that we see in this country. And so didgeridoos are basically hollow tubes, um, and they're usually made from some sort of hardwood, like a eucalyptus tree, but bamboo is another popular material you use them from. And maybe I can show you here. Can you see right through? Yeah, I'll turn on. See if I can get to you there. Oh yeah, there you go. You can see right there. It's just a hollow tube. So it takes a lot of skill to play one of these and play them well. Awesome. But I know somebody's got a lot of skill. I'm gonna see if give well, Beth a shot at this. I'm <laughs> learning. And I need to um, to play the didgeridoo, you take a big deep breath and you vibrate your lips <laughs> like that. And the didgeridoo will change and amplify the sound. Let me see if I can do it. I've been working on it. Alright, good luck. <gasps> With that really good. It's Excellent. really fun. It makes my nose tickle. It's, all those vibrations. Yeah. <laughs> That's fun. really fun. Excellent. Well, let's get. Speaking of the school, Miss Tedesco scientists want to know if turtles live in the sewer. I can see why you'd ask that. There was a sign by the sewer grate at the school oh, because the, the all the ground, all the rainwater mm. that falls there washes into that drain pipe and that goes right to the Great Barrier Reef, right to the ocean. It gets, yeah, it goes into the ocean and mm -hmm. gets carried to the barrier. Uh, maybe you're thinking it's like sea turtles might live in there, but they, but they don't, they don't live in there. There are some turtles that, that sometimes are found in sewers, but a really interesting story here in Australia is that there, one time there was a species of turtle that's actually from North America, from the United States, called the alligator snapping turtle that was found in the sewer in Sydney. And what happened there is that somebody many years before that, almost 20 years before that, stole that particular turtle from the zoo and released it in the sewer. And then it was found 20 years later. But generally, no. No, there's no, no turtles living in the sewer here. Well, how about the bird that we saw at the school? Oh. Ms. Tedesco scientists wonder if it was a noisy minor bird mm -hmm. or a kookaburra. How can you tell the difference? Uh, well, they're two different kinds of birds and they look quite a bit different when you see them in person. Um, the kookaburra is a much bigger bird. It's king, related to kingfishers, and it's a it's a much bigger bird than the minor. Uh, the noisy minor is a smaller bird, has a small bill. If you notice, that was a, there's different kinds of kookaburra birds. That was a blue winged, and they have a big, heavy, thick beak. Um, so yeah, and it's got a little blue along its wings, which the uh, noisy minor does not have. Oh, excellent questions. Mm -hmm. The rad researchers wonder why were all the kids at school wearing those hats? Ah, oh, the sun. Yeah, the sun, they are very serious about sun protection here in Australia. That's why hats, wide brim hats are very common. And that's actually part of their school uniform. They have to have those hats. Yeah, and by sun. wearing those hats, they bring their own shade wherever <laughs> they go. Good segue into word breakdown. Well, Yay. shade, if you've ever seen your shadow, you've seen shade. You're, you're mm -hmm. casting shade. And that just means blocking the direct rays of the sun or direct ways of light and causing that, that darker area around that where it's blocked, which is oftentimes cooler. Yeah, so if you can hang out in the shade, you can avoid sunburn and you can mm -hmm. stay a little cooler, so it's all excellent. Yeah. Well, let's all say shade. 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 Now let's clap each syllable. Shade. shade. Let's take it apart. Mm. Find your right hand over okay. here. Tap wrist, elbow, shoulder, head, shoulder, we'll hip, even nice. your knee. Tap as long as you need to until you run out of syllables. Ready? Okay. <laughs> shade. shade. Oh. One syllable, we're done. Just well, you know oh, what? Can't break we that can down break anymore. syllables down into smaller yeah. parts yeah. called phonemes. Yeah. And lucky for us, we have opposable thumbs. Yeah. Just one, not like not like koalas, not but like anyway. <laughs> All right, so put your opposable thumb right on your wrist, and you're going to tap a finger to that thumb for each phoneme or sound we hear in the word shade. Ready? All right. Yeah. Sh a d. d. Let's do it again. Sh a d. And let's blend it together. Shade. shade. Wow, you really can break those words down. Yeah, and if I have long words with lots of syllables, I can tap out each syllable and get close on spelling. Yeah. Really helps me. All right, let's, let's see if see we can it. get some more questions here. I know we're getting low on time, but oh, we, we have a lot more koala questions. Okay. So we, our friends are curious about how long a koala can stay in a tree and if they ever go down onto the ground. 
Uh, they spend most of their lives in a tree. Yeah, they, but every once in a while they can get they go down to the ground. Um, but not it's not very common. Usually something's happened to their tree or they have to leave the ground have to leave the tree. But they do come down every once in a while to drink. We used to think they didn't drink at all. They just got all their water they needed from the leaves they ate. But it turns out that they do come down and drink every once in a while. But it's, they spend most of their time in the tree. And Mrs. Davis's data diggers, unfortunately, we don't have any koala bones to see. But do you mm. know how big a koala brain is? It's not really big. It's about, about like that. Wow. Oh gosh, about yeah. like that. And how, how big are their pouches? How many babies fit in there? One. They usually have just one. And so if there's two, that's a real, it can be a real problem for pouch size. Um, so maybe that big. Yeah. I think like a little sandwich size. But it zipper stretches. Bag. Yeah, yeah, but they stretch. They're very stretchy. Excellent. Excellent. So when a koala is full grown, does mm -hmm. it go off on the wild on its own? Yes. Excellent. Yes. And it's about a year or so. They, they, they get weaned six months to a year. And between a year and three, one year and three years, they will leave their mother entirely. But for quite a while, even after they're weaned, they will hang around with their mother. But at about one to three years, they, they go off on their own. Oh, Mohammed has another turtle-related hey, question. <laughs> he wonders, was there a turtle in the swimming pool? Uh -huh. Oh, I know what you're thinking of. Yeah, no, it does kind of look like a turtle. No, that's a cleaner. So yeah. it runs electricity and it goes around on the bottom of the pool, cleaning, keeping the bottom of the pool clean. Excellent. Kind of like a aquatic vacuum cleaner. They're really cool. <laughs> we do have more questions, and I hope to get to some more. But first, we have a question for all of you. Oh, yeah, because today is your last day to vote on where we should go next week. We have two options that's for right. you. That's right. Maybe you think we should head, keep going north, up the coast into the tropical rainforest or maybe you think no 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 head away from the coast <laughs> and go inland towards the outback yeah yeah well we could keep going north and we would go from our temperate rainforest we are now to a tropical rainforest with just more rain a little bit more lush <laughs> but that's taking us out of our way mm -hmm. and we probably we definitely won't see as many gray kangaroos there in the tropics as we would see out towards the outback and it just feels like we're delaying testing our hypothesis by continuing that back where we know we'll see more kangaroos. But, 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 while we're <laughs> on the coast, now is really our only chance to get up into the tropical <laughs> rainforest. True. Once we head inland, it'll be too far away. And we can keep testing our hypothesis, even in the tropical rainforest, because marsupials, including gray kangaroos, live there too. Along with other interesting animals like saltwater crocodiles and some animals that live nowhere else, like the cassowary. Woo. That is true, that big bird. Yeah, those are really great birds. But it's not up to us, it's up to you. So please vote by the end of the day today so we know where to go next week. All right, let's try to squeeze in a few more questions. A few more questions. Uh, yeah. Ms. Tedesco scientists want to know how can you find a lot of animals? Uh, keep our eyes open, be quiet, mm -hmm. and and be think, out there. And think about the patterns, uh, mm -hmm. their, how they act, what you expect them to do so you can put yourself in places where you're more likely to see them. Right, right. If you want to find a koala, you don't go out in the middle of the ocean or the middle of the desert to look for them. You look where there are trees that they, you know, where they have leaves that they like to eat. Excellent. Do sloths live in Australia? No. What do rock wallabies eat? Uh, they eat grass. They're, they're, well, browsers. They're, they're herbivores. They eat leaves and things like that. And uh, do rock wallabies ever swim? Um, rarely, but they can. They're, they're actually pretty good swimmers. Do male kangaroos have a pouch? No. Hmm. How far can a kangaroo jump? Let's talk about a gray kangaroo. A gray kangaroo, 20 feet, 22 feet, somewhere in that range. Two bounces to pass a school bus. Yeah. 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 And what does it look like inside a koala's pouch? Um, it's hairless, pretty much hairless with a few hairs, and there'll be some teats in there for the young to attach to, to, to feed, um, and like just kind of skin. Yeah. Um, do koalas have any predators? Have we heard about the green ant hurting them? I have not heard about green ants hunting, hurting them. Um, we have no. heard about the green-headed ants, though. Yeah, but I've not heard, heard that being a problem. Their, their biggest problem is people. Yeah. Um, people cutting down their habitats. We used to hunt them. They don't hunt them. We don't hunt them anymore. Um, but really, we're their main predator, and habitat loss is the big issue. Yeah, and finally, where do we get the camper van? We, we rented, rented it. Oh, oh, my goodness. Look at the time. Wow. Uh, we are definitely out of time, but what a great week we've had exploring the coastal route. Yeah. Yay. Yeah, yeah. I'm excited to see where, see where you send us next week, and, you know, who knows what we'll see. But I know if you look at your bingo card, you're going to see that you can cross yes. off the koala. Yes. You can cross off the, what's the other? I know, rock, rock wallaby. wallaby and the kookaburra. Kookaburra. Yeah. Oh, my yeah. goodness. Oh, excellent. Well, thank you for joining us and for all your questions, and we will see you next time. Bye. Bye, everybody.